Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 7, Episode 19. It isn't the main thing about you. And going to episode numbers real quick, it's been weird in the last couple episodes. <laughs> Because a lot of the sites I've seen have this episode as episode 20, but the official lists I look at say episode 19. And by the episodes we've done so far, this would be episode 19. So what's going on? <laughs> I'm not sure. Maybe there's been some deviation between actual broadcast order and originally planned broadcast order? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but on to the episode itself. This is an interesting episode. The things I found most interesting about it was actually some of the background stuff right at the beginning. If you look in the background, you can see Granny Smith and Grand Pear, I think his name was. Well, the Pear grandfather and Granny Smith actually selling fritters and pears together in a booth. And you also see Apple Bloom in the background talking to the woodcutter. I didn't notice Granny Smith and Grand Pear. I was very focused on Apple Bloom and Burnt Oak. And I was like, oh, that's a nice callback. Yeah, there's lots of stuff going on in the background. There, there's actually an instance where Octavia and the lady from the Sofas and Quills, I would buy more of these if they were in color. She was actually talking to Octavia in the background in one of the previous shots. Hmm. So yeah, this season they're really using the background really well. At first I thought this was going to be all about Mare's Day, and I'm like, hmm, is this supposed to be the pony equivalent of Mother's Day? Because everyone waited to the last minute and everyone's buying flowers. Yeah, yeah, that sounds a lot like Mother's Day. Yeah, though with the name, it's like, but aren't all females mares? Or is it only ones that have had kids? I don't know horses, so... <laughs> uh, mare is the term for a female horse, regardless of whether or not she's ever born a foal. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I was like, is this the equivalent of Woman's Day? Because I think we have that. <laughs> They're very good at keeping track of all the holidays we have now, because there's a lot of them. Well, not really holidays, but days where you celebrate something. Like National Pizza Day and stuff like that. Yes, and International Left-Handers Day, and even entire months have more than one to them. So there's a lot of overlap, and I think it just depends on who's declared the day. Because like, there's Office Assistant Day, Manager's Day, but then there's also System Admin Day. And none of these are, like, really big holidays that actually get time off or anything or stuff like that. So I don't think they're on many calendars, so that's why I don't know a lot of them. Yeah, so Mare and Mother both starting with M and the whole last minute thing. And the fact that there were both males and females making purchases inclined me to think it was kind of like Mother's Day or Woman's Day. Because they keep trying to make Mother's Day more of a woman's day. Just honor all the women in your life. Spend more money. <laughs> but yeah. I was thinking they were going for more of a Mother's Day, like you said. Because that's what I was thinking at first. But I was like, but mayor is kind of a generalized term, so... <laughs> uh, but then comes Rarity, shining like a goddess. Yes, going around to dispensing her wisdom and helping several different shops, all in preparation for her big photo shoot with Photo Finish, which you immediately knew was going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, yeah. And now moving on to Zakora, I think she has this whole problem that happened in Emperor's New Groove. She needs to label her potions. They're all the same color. Uh, that was very plot device. It's like, hmm, both the potions look the same. They've been put in the same vials. Yeah, these are going to get mixed up. And it was a little vexing that it was so obvious. Though it is nice to have Zakora back. It was definitely nice to see Zakora again. We haven't seen her in a while. Though there seemed to be a spot where she didn't quite rhyme in the episode, where like it didn't quite work or she actually spoke plainly. <laughs> Well, the English language is very limited in the number of rhymes. There are more than you think there are, but there are fewer than in other languages. I want to go back to Sofas and Quills, and it's like, I want to go back and check other episodes and make sure that they didn't have other colors of sofas. Ever. Hmm. Hmm. 
something to look into, and all the episodes are available. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty easy just to go back and at least check some of them that we know Sofas and Quills was at least in. be kind of a pain to check over all of them. I wonder if our fans would be willing to do that. <laughs> just because you don't feel like doing any additional work... Is there any reason to go, hey, people who are watching this, go research something for us? They would be rewarded with a sketch. If I had the time. <laughs> Actually, I would, I would definitely have the time for a sketch. A quick one. One of the $3 ones. You can find those at my commission page. I mean. <laughs> Did you actually add those to your commission page? I thought you were just doing it as a promotional Kofi thing. I think they are still a promotional Kofi thing. So if you want one, you can still get one at Kofi. Just follow the link. <laughs> All right, enough shameless self-promotion. Back to the episode. Oh, but I had a whole script and everything! Uh, no, I'm never that prepared. <laughs> but as she said, back to the episode. Uh, yes. I actually had to pause this episode a lot after the whole hair thing happened. Hmm, really? I had to pause Daring Dunn more than this one. Because even though I saw where it was going, I was like, eh, this could be more painful. Though it is a good illustration that confidence really comes from the person, not really how they look. Because they say a big thing about a good first impression is having lots of confidence. Even if you don't feel that you're confident, pretending that you're confident makes people think you're confident. Yeah, and it was less about her appearance and more that she thought that other ponies listening to her was due to her appearance. But there was some very negative self-talk in here. And uh, not just Rarity, but the shopkeeper at the fan store saying how none of them were fabulous. And they're all agreeing. Mm. I'm like, that's incredibly negative self-talk. Like, you just put yourself and your customers down. That, that's not good. I know from a plot device standpoint, it was to make Rarity feel bad because she's used to being fabulous. And the shopkeeper's not recognizing her. Hmm. And she's also used to standing out in a crowd for being fabulous, not being, what the heck happened? Did a lawnmower have an argument with your hair? What happened? I know, and I don't understand why she just didn't wear a scarf or a hat. I don't get why she had to cover up in such a plain cloak. Why does Rarity even have a plain cloak? This is Rarity we're talking about. It's kind of interesting how Rarity went kind of punk rock and used hair extensions. But during the episode, they tried to give her hair extensions, and those didn't work. So what's the difference at this point? Also, going back to Sakura, why are manes such a problem for magic to fix? That was never really explained, because it's just hair. I say once again, plot convenience, because Twilight and Starlight agree, and it shouldn't be any more difficult than the color change that we saw in Boastbusters where we had a color change of coat, why would mane be more difficult than coat? They're both hair. Yeah, and I think the mane was actually changed in both busters. In Rarity, it was like green. And it's like, what's wrong with green? You know, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's definitely a plot device. I think that's the real problems I was having with this episode. I was like, that seems contrived. I see where that's going. I'm liking the message they're trying to convey, but the way they're conveying it feels a little off to me. Yeah, and I wasn't necessarily thinking that Rarity used hair extensions for her final look. I was thinking it was more styled and dyed and volumizing the little bit of hair that was left. Because if she had hair extensions just laying around, why didn't she do that sooner? That's my main question. There's a lot of like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why is that so difficult? Why is this so difficult kind of things going on in this episode? It's kind of funny how small things like that kind of break canon they've set up before. But this can be fixed. This has been changed. This has been altered before. So why is it such a problem now? Like, for instance, Rarity chopping off her tail and giving it to the dragon, which was actually pointed out in the episode. Speaking of which, when that came up, it was like, oh, the main six are going to give pieces of their hair to Rarity. That's also what I was figuring, or that they were going to go visit the sea serpent and see if he had kept the remains of her tail after all that time. Right after that, and that didn't happen, I was like, guys, you missed it. You missed it by that much. You should have done that. 
I think that's the second time that's happened this season for us. We're like, wait a minute, why didn't you do that? That would have been so co much cooler with how we said, yeah, he should have transformed into that creature and beat the other creature down. His brother would have respected him more. It would have worked out better. And in this episode, we're both like, why didn't the main six give pieces of their main to Rarity? It would have been so much better. Also, why couldn't she get a hold of a wig? I know they were showing that as an idea with Granny Smith, but I don't think that was a proper wig that she was wearing. And we know that there are wigs in Equestria because Pinkie Pie gave one to Cranky. Also, they did it. Though that brings up Spam, I really did like about this episode. They did a pretty good job of distracting you from where is Pinky until the very end where you're like, oh yeah, Pinky. Really? You were distracted. I was going, so when are we going to cut back to Pinky? Because she's probably drowning in soap bubbles. I love how fluffy and full of body their manes were. Yeah, and that was another thing I thought that they might do is that Rarity would give up her place you know, her shooting spot with photo finish to the three of them because their manes looked fabulous. And that would have been another tie-in to Rarity's aspect of generosity, of giving up the photo shoot because she wasn't able to do it, in her opinion, but allowing someone else to benefit from it. And this solution, where she just made herself stylish in a different way, is more what her original concept was, the element of creativity as opposed to the element of generosity. Because she did look fabulous. She looked right out of an 80s cartoon rock band. Very punk rock. Yes. Still way more stylish than Nightshade, though, who was a Gen 1 pony singer that all the baby ponies were crazy for, especially Baby Heartthrob. <laughs> Uh, Nightshade, Heartthrob, kind of works together. Uh, he's definitely older than her, and he's also in the thrall of an evil force, so no. Well, I was mostly talking about the names. Uh, but back to the episode, and asking my favorite question, any nitpicks <laughs> that we haven't gone over yet? Mm, that we haven't gone over yet. Okay, how about... The absolute rudeness of the sofa and quill guy selling Rarity's couch out from underneath her. Yeah. That's not just rudeness. That's bad business. It was reserved for her. It shouldn't have even been on display. No, it shouldn't have. And if everyone liked it so much, he should have just gone, that one's spoken for, but I'll gladly take pre-orders and get some made just for you. And he still would have gotten the sales. But instead, he harms the existing customer who gave him this money-making idea. There's a lot of plot, not convenience per se, but it is plot convenience, but it's like, like the plot deliberately is railroading things. <laughs> so it doesn't quite seem natural for these things to be happening, is what I'm trying to say. Yes, because are we saying that these ponies are really that shallow? Yes, Rarity was lacking in confidence, and that was affecting her ability to interact with other ponies. But did that really mean that these other ponies needed to be acting as rude as they were? I think that's really giving me a clear image of why I didn't quite like something about this episode. It was like, throughout watching the episode, something was bugging me about it. I was like, I wasn't getting the full enjoyment out of it, but something, like, I'm enjoying these parts... But the overall narrative seems to be, I don't know, forced and not contrived. There were some contrived parts, but just something about the overall narrative was really bugging me. Yeah, contrived, full of plot devices, and things that I feel were out of character for the ponies as they were portrayed. Mm -hmm. Just that overall was bugging me when I was watching this episode. There were a lot of nice things in it, but... <laughs> also, that didn't look like vanilla oat swirl that Rarity was eating this time. I would have liked to have known for sure what flavor that was. Mm. I mean, I still think it's wrong it was vanilla oat swirl and not chocolate oat swirl in the original, but it didn't really look like vanilla oat swirl to me this time. Hmm. I think someone may have made fun of that in one of the art sites I go to because it looked like they made it Neapolitan. Mm. I don't think that one was Neapolitan. 
because I don't remember looking at it close enough to really see that the three different flavors would be there. No, it had some sort of swirl in it, but it didn't really look like vanilla and oats. It looked more like a vanilla raspberry swirl to me, but they never said. And it's a small detail, but I would have liked to have known. Also, the comedic stuff of the magic that Starlight and Twilight were trying, even though they knew that main magic, air quotes, wouldn't work. I mean, they were basically stealing with their magic to try and give Rarity her main back. Though I do like how Rarity's main turned out when Rainbow Dash tried to do it, but it, like, it didn't follow her. Because <laughs> actually it would have been cool if it followed her around and like, wind blew it away or something. Mm-hmm. No, the the stylized cloud looked very nice. I was like, oh, that's very elegant. Could totally see some fan art of that. If I had the time, I would totally draw fan art of that. Someday you will learn to manage time. Either that or you will get faster at drawing. I'm not sure what's going to come first or be easier. It's probably going to be a little bit of both. So do you have more thoughts or should we start wrapping things up? <laughs> A little more. This was a very Rarity-focused episode, and Rarity was in Twilight's castle. Where was her ultimate fanboy, Spike? Hmm. Hmm. I don't remember him in this episode, though part of me says that he was there, but I don't remember him being there. He could have been in the background, but I don't recall him having any spoken lines, and he definitely didn't have any interaction with Rarity. And also on nitpicks... Rarity wanting her friend's honest opinions and at the same time being vexed that, oh, come on, can you guys at least try to pretend it's not that bad? Do you want your friend's help or do you want them to lie and say everything's okay and not as bad as it could be? Because, I mean, there is the concept of white lies for politeness sake. And then Rarity manages to come out and articulate what she's truly wanting, which is her friend's help to solve the problem, which they're all able to jump on board with. And they all have different ideas and they all try different things, which is what you would want. You have a problem, you turn to your friends for help, and you try out different ideas. I also like how, as I mentioned before, they brought up the whole thing about Rarity sharing part of her mane with the dragon. And I'm like, yeah. And that's when we both thought, yeah, the friends will... No, no, that didn't happen. Dang it. Well, I also thought that that might give her a better realization that she's already sacrificed her beauty before, and it was fine. So the problem this time was only that she didn't choose it, and her loss interfered with plans she had. I think that was another thing, is Rarity came off as kind of shallow, um, more shallow than she has been before in parts of this episode. I think that may have been another thing that was bugging me. Yes, because while she is very interested in beauty and designs, she is both creative and generous, and this just seemed very shallow, and also I would have thought she would have had better ways to deal with it. I mean, like I said before, a hat, a scarf... She has all these beautiful ribbons and jewels. Why didn't she braid some ribbons up with some jewels and work that along her mane? You know, there were a lot of creative things that she could have done, but instead we went straight into her going into a slump and deciding that if she wasn't beautiful, that no pony cared about her. Yeah, like I said, I liked the message they were going for, but the execution is what really bugged me about this episode, I think. It's not like I hated it, I just didn't like how they were doing it. Yeah, between the predictability and kind of the railroading and the lack of creative problem solving, it just felt a bit off to me. I did like her final look. I liked that she got into the magazine, because I had a feeling that was going to happen. And kind of liked how they show what a trendsetter Rarity still is because the fast forward to several months later her mane has grown back but a lot of ponies were sporting the style that she used to get through that time while her mane was growing back out. Huh. So we move on to our final thoughts of the episode and end the outro. I think so because even with the off topic and pauses it looks like this one's coming out kind of long. 
Uh, so I'll go first. I like the episode. The way the plot was handled bugged me a lot. I didn't really like that part, but I enjoyed aspects of the episode. I enjoyed aspects of rarity, the final style, the background nods in this episode. They're really doing a great job with that. The facial animations, woof. They're really nailing those this season. It's just amazing. <laughs> it's going to be really interesting to watch the movie now with having seen how well they've just done with their current software. Yeah, to me this was one of the weaker episodes, but at least it still had a good message, nice animation. It had some good highlights in it, some nice moments, and seeing design changes in both main ponies and background ponies really just shouts out to how much more they're able to do with the software that they're using and the assets they have built up. Because a lot of times with the children's show, everyone always wears the same thing because reasons. Yeah, that actually reminds me of something else I wanted to bring up. I was almost hoping it would be a permanent main change for Rarity. Like, whatever happened by the end of this episode, it would be a permanent thing, and then that's what she would have for a while. I guess Hasbro didn't want to spend that much time making a different Rarity toy. Mm. Or they went ahead and made one and just moved on. It's like, it was in the show for five minutes. That's long enough for us to make a toy, right? <laughs> so, outro? Mm hmm Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 7, Episode 19, It Isn't the Main Thing About You. Hey, thanks for hanging around till the end of the episode. I hope that means you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, subscribe, share, comment, watch other videos. All of these things help support the channel in terms of its YouTube listings. If you enjoy Lux's art and would like to see more of it, you can find it on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and a couple of Mastodon servers. Really enjoy Lux's art and would like some of your own? Check out his commission page for pricing and availability. Would you like to toss a few bits our way but aren't interested in a commission? We have both a Patreon and a Ko-fi page. Patreon starts at a dollar, Ko-fi works in increments of three. Thank you again for listening.